Centurion truly free. Hello and welcome to another Baldur's Gate 3 video. In today's video I'll be showing you my two favorite strategies for getting the Duke, uh, Duke Raven Guard's armor and sword. So for the first strategy, this, will, will, this one will happen pretty much as soon as you get to Act 3. When you reach Worms Rock, you will get the speech, coronation, everything, yada yada. Then when you are in the throne room, you will have both Gortash and Raven Guard in the room. You will have to have at least one of your playable characters in the room at all times because if you leave even through this door what is going to happen is raven guard will get teleported to the iron throne and we don't want that we want him here so that we can get this relatively earliest as possible now do note for this uh strategy the first strategy if you succeed you will kill gortash as well and you'll get his his stone and equipment what this will end up with uh, end up doing will be it will bug out a few quests but they're only side quests so it won't lock you out of the finishing the game so you don't have to worry about that the only quest it's gonna lock you out of from the top of my head is the iron throne the steel watcher foundry the umberly servants quests and the save omelum but if you don't want any of the magical items from those quests and you want raven guard's armor as early as possible then you can just do this uh, the second strategy happens quite a bit later. It actually involves rescuing Revengar, but we'll get through it when we actually, when I get to the showing you how to do it. Okay, so now for the setup for the first strategy, we're going to have to choose a character. If you have a rogue thief or someone who has two bonus actions or action search, it will be very useful. Otherwise, you will need some other things to get better action economy. So we are going to actually need a portion of speed here. So you want a high dexterity character. If somebody has with who has alert, that's even better. Uh, you want to ungroup them from the rest of the party. And you want to drink Elixir of Vigilance. And you want to set up Potion of Flying, Potion of Visibility, and Potion of Speed. Potion of Flying you want to drink early if you don't have the Elite Power for Flying. If you do have it, then you need the Flying Potion. You will need Potion of Visibility, unless you have some other way of going invisible mid-combat. And you might also need Potion of Speed in case you run out of movement. And it's useful to have it because you can use it as a throw throwing action. You can throw it at your feet and still get the haste. So now, the rest of our party, we're going to send them to camp because we don't want them in combat. Idiot. Then we are going to access our Barrelmancy stash. And we will send all of the barrels to our barrel monster, in this case Shadowheart. The rest of the party remains in camp. And we are now going to plop all of this down. Now, this is regarding the items, pretty much it. You will need, of course, our arrow, fire, alchemist, fire, or smoke powder bomb. But regarding the setup, that is it. Okay, right. Before we start the fireworks, I should mention... You will kill Ravengar here, obviously, but you won't actually kill kill him, in a sense. Uh, you will get Mizora later. She will offer you... I uh, will basically tell you to meet her at the camp, and she will offer Will the whole second pack deal, where you can choose whether she revives Gortash, uh, revives Ravengar, but Will stays as... She stays as his patron, or Ravengar remains dead, but Will ends up be becoming free of the contract after we finish the game anyway we are now going to try to make it so that raven guard doesn't actually hop over to the steel watcher because he can get opportunity uh, opportunity attacks on you and we don't want that because he can knock you prone and make you skip your turn so we'll try to get him to fly or elsewhere but we'll see let's just do it in the middle okay Okay, I think this is actually good. We should be able to freely um, travel between them. We're gonna plow here. Right, we need a potion of speed. Let's check it ourselves. Here we have Raven Guard's armor and sword. We're gonna send these to camp. Then we're going to fly over to Lord Ordash. I didn't fly for some reason. That's fine. 
uh, we're gonna pick up the key you can read the letter here to find out about the diabolist then i will shift well control mark the crossbow boots and the armor send them to camp I like to pick up the gauntlet last, as it is the actual netherstone place, and I want to take it into my inventory, so I'll just pick it up. You get another safe here because you're supposed to get a cinematic, but since we're in combat, there is no cinematic. We will now dash, drink invisibility, and we try to get the hell out of here. We want to get as far away as possible. Well, yeah. Okay. So you want to stay here, you don't want to go down because you're burning and you will get the cinematic. So you will actually exit combat and enter combat again because as soon as the Steel Watchers don't find you, it will exit the combat. So let's just see. Yeah, he's going to go over here, he's going to try to detect us. Now this should trigger the cinematic and exit the combat and, and uh, trigger the cinematic. There we go. I'm just gonna skip through this. We enter combat again, and, luck and luckily the second time we also are first, so since we're not burning anymore, we'll just drink another invisibility and we'll go down. We can just end turn. They will now also look for us. And they. As soon as this guy's turn is over, yep, and now we just go back to camp. And there you go, that's how you get the Raven Guard's armor, and on top of it you also uh, assassinate Gortash. Alright, so now I'll show you how to get across the Worm's Rock, because it's tricky now. The entire Worm's Rock will be aggroed on you, like there will be, I think, permanently hostile. So what we need to do now is go to the south span of Worm's Crossing, where there is, well, people aren't aggroed here, they're actually just fine. And we will have to go all the way to here while we're, while we're traveling. Let me just get the potions back because I will. You will need invisibility again to get across. We can leave the rest of the party here. So these guys shouldn't be aggro. They should be just pretending like nothing happened. You want to drink invisibility again? Fly over to here. You could jump down here and go around. You could also jump down and then uh, try to get to the Council of Floric to rescue her. Because in the prison, you can actually easily get outside of the Worms Rock, so we're the, it's not red for some fast traveling. But if you have any, if you do want any quests here, you will kind of have to go invisible to the prison to do the rescuing the Floric and the Worm. But we're gonna ignore that for now. As you can see here, Mizora is waiting for us because she wants to talk to you, and we will talk to her. She will tell us meet her at the camp and she will offer the uh, will the new deal essentially. She offers you every time when uh, you want to rescue Ravengard from the Iron Rock. But there that's the first strategy. So I'll see you in the next in another save for the next one. Alright, so here we are in a different save for the strategy number two. This one is a simple but also a little bit tricky. This will happen later in the game or early in the game, depending on how if you prioritize rushing the Iron Throne or not, you want to rescue Ravengard, he's, so he's in your camp. You don't want to heal him in the Iron Throne so that he is low HP, because we will be knocking him out to loot his corpse or his body. It, it should actually kill him if we do this right. So, for this we'll need a couple of things. We'll need a character with a Scroll of Darkness or a Spell of Darkness. And we're going to need a second character with relatively high spell save DC. Now, you, could, you, you can increase this by drinking a elixir of Balmage's power. You can equip these various items that increase the spells ADC. You will need a hold, a hold monster spell, because hold person doesn't work against an ally. So we'll need hold monster. And so to do this, to set it up, you will want to make sure that Dogmeat and Albert aren't close to Ravengard, because we have to cast Darkness some something like this so that it doesn't hit him directly but that he is at the edge of the spell because what that's gonna end up doing is he won't aggro on you but you'll be able to attack him from the darkness 
so that the rest of the camp doesn't aggro. Because if you attack Raven Guard and uh, any of the NPCs or whatever see you, everybody will aggro on you. So let's try to get this set up. But also I forgot to mention, you want to do this when you're at basically getting ready for the long rest. Because you want to quickly wrong, long rest so that people don't realize what's going on. Okay, so... We are going to wait until the owl bear actually goes away, because we don't want dog meat and owl bear here, because they might mess it up, because they might get hit by the darkness and they'll make everybody aggro on us. So I want to cast it something like this. So we'll enter turn-based as soon as they get out. There we go. We'll enter turn-based mode, and we're gonna cast darkness like this. I think this will be fine. Now, we're gonna position Lazel here. She will be smacking Raven Guard. We'll get our spellcaster. Who is. Uh, we wanna get her into the darkness itself, so I will actually have the boots for flying. This is easier to do if you have all player characters, or at least one more, because. Uh, or if you do a uh, playable character that's around this area. But since I'm doing it with a hireling, this is a bit tricky, so we're going to fly here. It is easier if you have a character who is immune to blindness or has Devil's Sight. So, I'm just going to save this, so in case it fails, I can try again. But now we're going to cast Hold Monster. 100% chance. It was 85 earlier. Right, I drank a Elixir of Battle Mage's Power. We're going to hold, hold person him. We will enter darkness. We don't have an action. Right. Right, I know why. I uh, I casted this while in turn base. So we can easily get around this by just drinking a portion of speed. And we are going to... We have the non-lethal non on. We're going to smack him. And now everybody is chill. They're not aggroed. We're going to loot Raven Guard. I, I tried to reverse pickpocket him, so I gave him the plate armor. It didn't work, obviously. We're going to send this to camp. What you want to do now is exit turn based, enter long rest. Exit turn based, uh, enter long rest, skip this cutscene. And now Raven Guard should be just chilling. Like. Nothing happened. Yeah, there we go. He's 1 HP. He's just chilling here. He doesn't have his sword anymore. Armor is still on because I guess this is tied to his model. He's heavily beat up, but he works just fine. The devil's stench lingers, but will it? And that's the second way of getting the, the armor and the weapon. Now, of course, this doesn't bug out any of the quests because you could do this as soon as you rescue him. And, well, you're probably, you, you probably already have done then the Iron Throne and the Steel Wish Foundry. So yeah, there you go. That's my two favorite strategies. If you have your own ideas or your own favorite way of doing it, please post it down in the comments. I'd really like to see if there is any other more, maybe more simple ways of doing it. Because these two are relatively, uh, not difficult, but they require some setting up. But they're doable. So if you want to make a build that requires the sword or the armor, it's definitely doable. But yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed. I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe for more Baldur's Gate 3 content and have a good one.